Welcome back, everyone. I am Cass Piancy. I'm joined, as usual, by my partner in crime, Mr. Bennett Tomlin. How are you today? I'm doing well, Cass. How are you? I'm exhausted. I've been talking all day. We're joined by two of our favorite Twitter friends, Lawrence, uh, who's at Function Zero on Twitter. How are you? I'm good. It is uh, t quarter past ten in the evening here. It's freezing outside. I'm half a bottle of cider deep and I have many things to share. And then uh, second time guest of the show, Mr. Josh Cincinnati, who is currently founder of Radiant Commons, a uh, contributor to Penumbra Zone, and uh, highly recommend reading his work at bitbanter.com, which is absurd and obscene. Uh, Josh, how are you today? Thank you. Those I, I, I feel superlative after those superlative uh, <laughs> declarations. I, no, I'm, I'm good. Um, I, I, I don't feel quite as comfy, I think, as Lawrence feels. He, he, looks, he looks like he's in the super cozy zone. I, I assure <laughs> you that's the, that's the mild effects of alcohol. Um, which, which I assure you will get exponentially worse as the uh, as the podcast goes on. I do I do have to wonder, Josh, when you are going to join us in twenty twenty three by finally converting to a proper Substack and getting some real eyes on your material. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then I I can't say that I I built my stupid static site generator myself. You know, mm, I think at that point, mm. and, and I'm you know as a sovereign individual, I should be able to do that and host it on Cloudflare. So. Um, uh, feels... what, what are your feelings about hosting monkey jpegs on your uh, on your static content <laughs> mm. Mm. only on the bitcoin blockchain anywhere that's else right that's, that's right <laughs> but you wouldn't ever trick and lie to the code would you <laughs> uh, I, 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 this, hold on i'm gonna jump it. in here I, I'm going to jump in here. I don't think anyone will know what the fuck we're talking about. Luke Dash Jr., who um, is a Bitcoin core developer and has had, um, God, innumerable run-ins with the public, I guess I should just say, everyone, about everything. Um, Reality recently, and society broadly. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, he recently Georgia. stated that uh, um, putting JPEGs on the Bitcoin blockchain is... Uh, Immoral, I believe, was was his statement. So I'd love to, yeah. Why don't we just start there? Thoughts, gentlemen. I I posted something about this earlier today. You know, it's it's the classic midweek midweek meme, which is my truly in my top two of memes. Um, that format, and it's the put whatever you want on the blockchain as long as you pay for it. Same on the other side, and the middle is uh, Adam Bax. We should start um, spam filtering in order for like getting rid of nonsense. Um, I, I think so long as you don't uh, pass any uh, kind of widely accepted moral boundaries, such as placing um, extreme pornography of various types on it, or like using it as a as a platform for, uh, um, I want to say leaking, but I think in most cases leaking is based um, uh, <laughs> doxing type information. If it's if it's JPEGs, if it's you know various financial like if it's various infrastructure, fine. What are you complaining about? This is the this is your accidental use case. That taproot enabled. <laughs> well, I mean, historically, Luke Dash has not been the biggest fan of accidental or intentional use cases for Bitcoin. Um, so our audience has <laughs> some context here. Back when Satoshi Dice was a thing and people were gambling using Bitcoin, Luke Dash also found that to be morally objectionable. And so he developed a special spam transaction filter for Bitcoin Core. In most of the places you could download Bitcoin Core, it was off by default. But Luke Dash Jr. was also a Gentoo maintainer. And so if you downloaded from their repositories, it was on by default, meaning your node would try to ignore these spam transactions that were um, people trying to interact with Satoshi Dice. So I'm not surprised to see him finding people doing the modern variation of colored coins objectionable. Well, what a morally equivocating king. Um, I said like the, the OFAC <laughs> equivalence discussion, uh, OFAC um, compliance discussion that we had on Ethereum after uh, the tornado cash um, incident um, really proves that there's nothing new under the sun, right? Um, I, I did find it deeply funny that this was a discussion that was being held um, for great content uh, by a certain subset of the worst people on the internet, um, only to turn around and go, etu, you know, this, <laughs> this is not new. And oh, yeah. I, I think part of it is some of these Bitcoin maxis committed to like a position during the NFT boom on Ethereum that like NFTs themselves were bad or vapid or something like that. And so their existence on Bitcoin and them 
potentially contributing to the security budget for Bitcoin now puts them in this uncomfortable uncomfortable state of cognitive dissonance. <laughs> it does feel a little bit no true Scotsman, but for uh, for non-witness data in, in a block. Um, I, I, I mean, like I, I have a position that approaches something like NFT cynicism, even, even though I, I, I have a whole bunch of them. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I would find myself um, rapidly objecting like to their very existence especially since it is effectively an accident of history i'd be like okay that's cool this is a thing that's happened we might as well accept it i i spent some time today looking at the ordinal library just to see if i could um put up a uh, you wouldn't validate a transaction containing the hex data for a monkey jpeg on there just like to make a point <laughs> <laughs> i will get around to it but i haven't had a, um, a wallet with any bitcoin in it for about two and a half three years now <laughs> <laughs> so, like i mean that's a step that i need to take first which does speak to me that that sort of speaks to the central point right like of of the the fact that uh there's finally a, a use that's driving the fee market and like no one was I, I, I say this as someone who's like a who, who actually still loves Bitcoin to this day, right? That that uh, I appreciate Bitcoin for what it is, but maybe like in order to if you if you want more of your preferred style of usage of Bitcoin to exist on Bitcoin, maybe maybe get people to use it that way and pay for it, right? Rather than like have someone not not have Bitcoin in their wallets for three years suddenly you know dashing out to go make an exchange so that they can post an ironic nft on it you know like <laughs> like maybe, maybe well maybe we should figure out what i've trained are. for this day josh <laughs> <laughs> lawrence may be slightly more prone to ironic posts than other people in the community maybe <laughs> though financial <laughs> legal advice I, I, th this this is kind of all of this is kind of at the center of what we're supposed to be discussing today i think um with a, a strong focus on satire in general um what you guys are talking about right now instantly made me think of um bennett you're you're starting uh fuck coin or was it fuck coin cash what was it it was it was one of those two and that's the most bitcoin <laughs> transactions i've ever done <laughs> was what, making do, um, a parody coin using op return instead of segregated I was about to say, this, this is how everyone eventually comes to Valhalla, right? Um, you know, like, <laughs> up until fairly recently, I was sitting there going, you know, I, I, I know about the existence of op return, but I don't really, like, know how you can, like, stuff it with things to make things affect, you know, provably un unspendable. And I was like, what if I made a shit coin? And I'm glad to see that it is not me, but people from across <laughs> the divide that are like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just yeah. gonna piss around on Satoshi's vision. <laughs> yeah, that, well, I was I was specifically trying to satirize Tether and their promises, and so I created a website for this coin, Fuck Coin Cash, I think it was, and it was the website had a variant of the Tether white paper with a few keywords changed, and then versions of some of their other posts and stuff like that meant to kind of point out some of the inconsistencies between them. And then I went on Omni and actually issued a token and like sent it to a bunch of the top tether addresses and then like changed the issuer for the token from the address I was controlling to tether's issuing address. So then tether <laughs> controlled the token, um, which I thought was just a funny little detail. And yeah, and that's the most Bitcoin <laughs> transactions I've ever done. It was all to like pull off this unnecessarily elaborate piece of satire. And I'm disappointed and frustrated to tell you that this probably makes you more of an expert in using the Bitcoin interface than 95% of people on Twitter. Um, uh, on Twitter, right. I mean in the world. Right. I think in the world, right? Like the, the minute that you pull up a CLI, you're immediately uh, in, in, like a couple of <laughs> levels up, right? I mean, I, I kind of had a similar experience in 2017 with .win, Um Although that was like primarily on the Ethereum blockchain. And I'm pretty sure like... Back then, I, I think I was probably like a top 5% Solidity developer, purely based off of the experience of, of deploying that contract, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah but, I, you I know, obviously I, now not so much. 
What's that? Yeah, I, I think my like my, my launch into um, Solidity Dev was uh, I, it's this known fact about me that um, the day that I started learning Solidity was coincidentally the day that DevOps one nine nine bricked the parity multi sig, <laughs> and I will leave that to float into the ether for people to decide how much <laughs> coincidence that is. But like, yeah, my my first like active like contribution was um, was was fixing um, a contract that blatantly called itself a Ponzi. Um, it turned out mm. to be a uh, an integer overflow error back at the time when safe math wasn't a thing. Um, it's like mine was a no, we can do this right, and well, here I am now sitting in a shed doing this. <laughs> so uh, don't kids, just just don't do that. <laughs> if you decide to do something for the bit, I would advise kids like looking at yourself in the mirror and taking a few deep breaths. <laughs> I mean, so I think this actually gets to the the kind of the, the point of the discussion at hand, because I think that Bennett and I both started like mostly being sat. Maybe it was only me, but I I, I certainly started being entirely a satire account. Um, and I guess from what I'm hearing from both of you as well is that like a lot of the useful ways that you got interested in cryptocurrency was through satire. Um, so it's funny because I, it's almost like the skeptics and the critics were like, oh man, satire's really necessary for getting for driving our message home. And then the people who want the adoption are also like, satire is super necessary for, for getting the adoption and driving our point home. Yeah, I, I think that tracks. I, um, I mean, my, my first like kind of reading about stuff was, I, I was working for a bank at the time um, when Ethereum launched and I was just kind of curious about like this thing that wasn't Bitcoin. I, I admit that I had seen um, like the, the deal for the, the ICO. I, I didn't pay any attention to it because to be blunt, I was doing my job. Um, <laughs> I printed out a bunch of stuff and I went to a bar that was near where I was living in Singapore and I just read the whole thing. I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. It's pretty close to the topic of my PhD. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, okay. well, like, I, I couldn't have done this like if I tried. Like just a complete accident of history. And to be fair, I, I've been really serious about it for a while, and I learned, like, the ins and outs. And then, as, as you say, right, like, I, I truly believe that nothing powers someone to learn something more than spite or humour. You, you cannot convince me other than this. Like, I, I have sat down and I have done, like, 60-hour coding sprints learning stacks that I do not know just to, like, make a D's nuts joke on a blockchain. <laughs> and I, I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Like I mean, Josh has done and said. Like I mean, I, I've seen your uh, Ponzi Co uh, white paper. I've read it with, with some admiration at the time. You truly did. Oh, thank you. Um, beat the competition to it. I mean, we've also talked about it in some way, which we will talk about later in terms of satire. But yeah, it does seem to be that the bit drives a lot of. I, I, I think there's a certain type of person, right? There's you've got your ideologically driven um, sort who are like, okay, this is. I, I I'm no destroy all banks um type i'm like okay this is cool this could you know things could be done safer etc etc um and then you do have people who are like it would be funny if this worked oh wait it actually does like in certain circumstances it, it works the way you want um and i've also made like a legendary joke out of it <laughs> yeah and, and sometimes it's like the joke in and of itself I mean, it's like one thing because you know you go on twitter and then you can like, uh, I, I don't remember if I did this during the Ponzi Co era, but it's like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you just made an explicit solidity contract that was Ponzi Co? And then you, you can frame that in terms of a joke and post it. But it doesn't really have as much power. It doesn't really, like, mm -hmm. act it doesn't have the same kind of, I think, delivery or impact as someone who goes to the length of relearning how to do LaTeX to write a 12-page white paper and then, like builds a solidity contract that functions like the white paper claims it would, right? Don Knuth uh, is currently rolling around in his grave going, the fuck you mean relearning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Don, I'm sorry. I, I failed you by forgetting. But no, I, 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 um, I do, but I think there's something, there is something, and maybe it is like, maybe Lawrence and I are just particularly wired, uh, and Bennett, uh, you know, given that you went to the to the lengths of making you know fuck, coin, fuck you cash, cash. coin fuck oh, cash no. coin uh, yeah an omni which is you know now a fun sort of relic too but but there's like it's like the fact that you went to that length like there's something there's something i think that drives uh uh folks like us like i that that intrinsic motivation to like make the joke land mm -hmm. in a way that 
actually has a great deal more power than simply just uh, uh, yeah, and, and writing about it is great too. But like, there's that extra step when you actually build it that just uh, it sort of tickles. It tickles me for sure. My kind of like pedagogy for this uh, came from before I started um, tinkering around with programming um, on blockchains, and even before I like started a job in industry, I taught. Um, at university for years, um, kind of like intermediate um, computer science topics. And I found that human did a really good job of that. Um, mm. So, for example, one of the topics that I would teach is the lambda calculus. Um, so abstraction over variables for uh, like application of terms. And uh, one of the great points that I would be able to make is um, the lambda doesn't mean anything. It's literally just a meta variable that indicates like abstraction of verbs. So you could replace it with, oh, I don't know. In my case, I'm not saying I did this, something phallic. And then commit to the bit over the case of a, like a huge bunch of computations on a whiteboard. Mm. Um, some pictures of which may exist, but I will never share them on Twitter. Um, but again, that kind of like, okay, people have learned something and they've laughed. You know, like, and to be fair, the more complex it is, great. I, I found that humor is a great tool to kind of get really complicated ideas, such as things from, I don't know, category theory, the thing where, like, you know, where mathematicians go to die. Um, be like, okay, that, that that's how that clicks. And hmm. if some of the stupid posts that like I make or some of like the little projects that I do work in that same kind of like delivery mechanism, so much the better. That's great. Maybe someone will learn how like Opraturn actually works. Maybe someone will understand why sparse liquid transactions are the only thing on the Bitcoin network, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and I, to add to that, I, I, just very briefly, I think in our industry it's particularly instructive and helpful because it contrasts so heavily with the people that fashion themselves as like you know prophets of the new financial order right you know you got people out there getting hair extensions to demonstrate oh, how like my how much favorite more. conspiracy theory of canals i just i look I there's the ample out. proof there's ample proof to suggest that you know some founders out there just might might feel like the oh. you know, next coming no, of no, Jesus. No, 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 no. No balls, Josh. I'll name him. Moshe got <laughs> hair extensions before he launched Aptos. <laughs> <laughs> and like Samson, it has pumped the price. There is ample <laughs> evidence. And to be fair, I will share this with you later. A two-year gap where there is no photos of him. And he comes out with far more hair growth than he could have gotten in that time. It is a wonderful theory. And we're not saying that if you pull the hair extensions out... Aptos will crash. We're, we're not saying that. <laughs> oh, it yeah. might happen, you know, <laughs> incidentally, but like, you know, it's not up to us to figure that out. Oh my but, God. But all of which to say, uh, and I can't take, I can't take credit. There is someone in, is, in the group chat Kanata that, yeah, Kanata on, on Twitter who came up with this theory. It's hilarious. <laughs> but, but there is, I, I, but I think in our industry, there are these people that style themselves that way. That like say, mm. we can fix everything that's wrong with the world. We are, you know, the next coming of Satoshi slash Jesus slash whatever. And um, and they take themselves far too seriously. And I think it's like, you know, frankly, like we owe it to uh, society at large to bring them down a peg um, <laughs> and to and to frankly, like, you know, to also add that kind of levity to an industry that that, uh, you know, money is serious business. So but, but the people that make these kinds of grandiose claims and that got very lucky in a lot of their wealth and timing um, that, you know, in their minds then tr turns them into a transcendent figure is like something that I think should be heavily critiqued and, uh, and, and you know, just you should keep, keep people honest, right? Um, I think this but... feeds back to like the, the critics that I respect are the ones that are funny and don't take themselves seriously. I, I could name... Mm at least half a dozen off the top of my head that are just it's it's just it's a serious it's a, it's a crusade right you know like what we need to do is we need to go to Jerusalem and burn it down um I, I i do i do find myself far more willing to both break bread and talk and agree on several points with people who are just like it's a bit shit isn't it <laughs> <laughs> It just both both things that I instantly am thinking of right now is one that Lawrence, it was you who said, you know, it's about committing to the bit. And I think, um, for instance, Cascoin, I just I constantly talk about Cascoin. I constantly talk about it um, relentlessly. And 
Um, and then on top of that, Bennett went out and bought castcoinfoundation.com and we decided, oh yeah, we can utilize this to link to our stuff. And like, it is about committing to the bit and it is about turning that into something while goofy, hopefully like still people want to look into your stuff more. And while it's not like, it's not about taking us seriously all the time, but it is about being willing to like, accept that some of our points might be fair, even if they're mm. funny. Yeah. What I will accept from here is that Cassata, uh, what you've done is um, you've allowed Bennett to um, take one of the fundamental lessons of uh, crypto traders to heart, which is to turn your friends into exit liquidity. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So oh, that was too much. Sorry. <laughs> so, so for you too, is is instruction is showing people some version of the truth or the light or something, the goal of the satire? Yeah, I uh, I would say that's part of it. I think um, I think so much about humor and satire is sort of exposing things that you know are true in a surprising context that you hadn't mm. thought about before, right? And then it's that mm. reveal that makes it, like the, the reveal of the, you know, of whatever you're writing or building that people then get exposed to, then seeing the, that like, oh yeah, I guess that is, like, I never thought about it that way, but that is fun, like, that is funny that it's true, right? I don't, I, I made some joke about Ponzi Co, like, it, like just thinking about the Ponzi Co white paper, and I had a graph of like, this is the graph of every, every company that has ever existed or will exist, and it showed like, value up and then down and i said yeah the miracle of <laughs> ponzi co is that we can compress all of this uh, and do it much more rapidly that's the power of technology right um uh and you know there's like a sort of truth there to what people were you know flinging at the time on cryptocurrency and uh and sort of like a broader idea about like what constitutes value in financial markets too maybe um, you're twitter's first accelerationist Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Crypto accelerationist. That's right. <laughs> A terrible um, breed of accelerationists. It's yeah. It's it's curious. I um. So I I I certainly have a vision, um. That is fairly pro crypto. Um. In in certain contexts, I I I I've never felt like going full Ted Kaczynski and writing a manifesto, mainly because I haven't got a timeshare <laughs> on a good cabin. Um, but I, I do think what I, what I find is that I walk both worlds in the actually like, no, I'm, I'm quite pro crypto and I can also be like, no, a lot of this is trash. And I, I think that's a value to me, at least where I am. And like, I, I, I have no reach. I'm just a dude who's screaming into the void on Twitter. Um, they're like, I, I, much like anyone else, I am the guy who in my friend group, people will ask about, is this trash? Is this good? Can you explain this? Mm. Um, a, a role that I have filled since I learned to touch type at five years old and all of a sudden that made me like my machines busted. I'm like, it's 1993. This happened. <laughs> um, I, I suspect as the future goes on, I said I, I'm currently at law school um, attempting to uh, to get involved in like the actual conversation of how this looks in the United Kingdom. I figure that the US can burn in this respect. It's not my problem. Um, humor may play a role there. Um, in being able to kind of, you know, get an analogy across or what have you. Um, mm. I, I think when it comes to, to money in particular, there is such a, a guardedness about this. Like Gilda Lindy, right? Um, look at what happened to um, Josh Browder when he tried to bring an AI bot into a courtroom, right? Um, immediately got told <laughs> he'd great. get his legs broken and thrown in jail. That was for fucking months. great. And the same thing appeals, like applies to to banks and financial <laughs> infrastructure, right? There's, it's. Uh, I don't think any jury in the world is going to convict me of saying that there is a vast intertwining between political structures and banking. And I'm not saying there's a better way. Some of the stuff that's in crypto is a better way. Some of it is absolutely atrocious, and everyone involved should be shot. Um, <laughs> there's a discussion to be had about what those um, former parts are and but again the thing is as soon as you, you start saying I, I have to couch every conversation where I meet someone new and they say what do you do and I don't want to give the answer of I'm an exotic derivatives engineer 
I find myself apologizing where I go, this might be contentious, but I'm a crypto dev or I'm a crypto advocate or like if, if they're like computer science in background, I might like go into a bit more detail on some of the stuff I've worked on. Um, even even as a, a like even as a just a journalist, I'm like, yeah, I'm a journalist who follows a uh, cryptocurrency and fintech and I. I watch the lights just turn off and they're like, I'm the other, cool. other Amy Gaskell. <laughs> <laughs> you're giving, I, I, you're giving too much credit. You're giving too much credit. They, they, they okay, don't, the they other, would have no fucking clue off. what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I, I do find that again, money is uh, money is inherently political. Money is inherently about power. And, um, I, I do have some, some takes that, um, would probably lean towards the radical in terms of like um, the the seizing of such power in like say the subversion of like financial surveillance. That doesn't mean that I can't couch it all in jokes when I want to talk about mm -hmm. my points. And I realize that like this is far more nuanced that will get across than like my lazy ass 9 a.m. posting on Twitter. <laughs> but I want to say like that's the goal. Um, I'll try and mm. give a talk. Like the last talk that I gave at a crypto conference was about the various hacks that had happened in the year before, and I had an Ernest Hemingway quote as the title. You know, never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Um, if I can continue doing that, and and being informative and possibly mm. offending a bunch of people on the way, I consider that <laughs> a life well spent. My wife will disagree, and my child will disagree, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> It's all about the clout. <laughs> Definitely gonna keep that clip. <laughs> yeah, clipped. Child's um, <laughs> I'm showing that to my child at the Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> Front run. Damn it. Um, oh, you forget no. I was any guy, Josh. <laughs> yeah, there. <laughs> but there is like I like that. Yeah, I will say I I agree with Lawrence there too. Like in in large part because I am. You know, I, there's so much shit in this industry, but I'm I'm in it because, and you know, you, you all know this from the last um, uh, the the last podcast that we all did together. But you know, I'm I'm in it for private, you know, private finance and private money, uh, and and am terrified of the world that might exist if we uh, don't figure that technology out and make it accessible to regular people, right? Um, and I think that the more like the more that like shitty people do shitty things in our industry, um, it really takes away the value of the real honest to God improvements that are happening that could help, you know, people in society more broadly. Right. Um, well, I, uh, can I put, can I push you on this? I actually would love to, to get yeah. your, your further opinion sure. on this because I, I was talking about this earlier today. I think there's a, I don't know if it's a theory or something, but this, there's this idea that bad money pushes good money out of systems. This idea that like, oh, uh, eventually all the good, all the good will, we can, if we just ferment the good and get rid of all this bad muck that's, that's in here. I mean, as you guys have said, 95% of it is fucking viruses and bacteria um, just molesting your, your fermenting uh, process. So... But let's pretend you got rid of all of that. Like, if we look at a legacy system, a legacy traditional finance system and banking, like, a lot of the bad stuff is all still there. All of the bad actors are still there. All of the bad shit that was happening a century ago is pretty much still happening. Like, isn't it a little too optimistic to suggest that these bad actors are going to ever exit? I think... Yeah, I think that is too optimistic. Um, I'd, speaking as someone with personal experience who has um, worked at a bank with such a financial system in the back, even though I, I worked on the risk management side, we found that, like, I'm, I'm speaking from complete personal experience from, like, a recollection of a GitHub that has been three, four years since I've looked at it, all right? Um, a lot of, I want to call it bad or outdated code still existed. Um, and to be blunt, it was nothing more than social pressure that prevented people from interfacing with it. Um, because it was like, well, you know, if you use this, things are going to go wrong, and this is it. This was helped by the fact, and this is often counter to my own point, that it was a gated system. We knew who the participants were, mostly because we had mm -hmm. Git blame. Um, 
a phrase that was effectively a swear word whenever someone brought it up in a conversation in the sprint because it knew that things were about to get thrown. Mm. I think even in the context of that, you know, like there's significant pressure to go like, okay, you know, this library's buggered. And then to be fair, this is the case for anything, like existing Python stuff, stuff that you can pull from NPM or what have you. It's like, okay, it just doesn't work anymore. It's a bit rotted or it's just out of like common practice. I think it is naive to say that in an open system, you would be able to eliminate that completely. Um, I, I have personal experience of trying like my own swing at making setting precedent um, for that kind of bluntly the fuck around and find out um, mm. thing. Uh, I, I will not reference the particular case, but I, I have spent significant time and effort trying to like dissuade um, efforts in this case. Uh, you can't. In long and short, mm. you can't. You can put you can put societal pressure on it, but again, this is the joy and the curse of an open system. Um, then it was allowed to create a uh, fuck coin. Um, that had a purpose. I mean, it was it was purely satirical in nature. He'll say that until he prints millions. Um, <laughs> and uh, and some of like the great work that I've done that really taught me about things like the Ethereum virtual machine and some of like the more esoteric parts of other chains has been done for the bit. Should I have been allowed to do it? Categorically not. Am I <laughs> grateful that I was given the chance to? Yes. I mm. probably come from like a different standpoint that like, oh, this was educational and I never like shilled stuff to people. I was like, does it work? You know, can I tinker about? I don't see a way short of the eye of Sauron um, exact kind of thing that I think is anathema to my own views on like the connection between politics and money um, that you can dissuade this thing with any, any meaningful uh, kind of like force I, I think the way you do it is through social pressure and with that said there are always going to be the desperate, the gambling, the punting um, who are like yeah you know what fine I'll, I'll... this time will be different um, Christ knows. Do you think social free. pressure is even effective anymore? Like, I, I guess I, I see we Bennett and I. Our last episode, we're talking about Do Kwan and how like the fact he hasn't been arrested is enough for people to be like, you got to support this guy. Like, you have to, you know. And it's like, how broken is this? Like, how completely fucking broken is this that that is the the low bar, right? Like, that's the bar. I think social pressure works within very small groups and when i say very small groups i'm talking on the order of the dunbar number uh -huh. um when um when the number came out when when the pitch deck came out from suzu and carl davies about gtx the uh, absolutely cursed platform for trading ftx debt and <laughs> other like such such magical nonsense i i ran a poll and i said if you were given the opportunity to participate in a seed round for gtx at an amount that you were comfortable with Provided that you were going to be publicly identified as being on the cap table, would you do it? And the answers were yes, happily, mm. yes, reluctantly, no, reluctantly, no, happily. And it was still about 20 people that were like, 20% of people out of about 500 that were like, absolutely sign me up. And one of the responses <laughs> that I got that I found quite telling was, I'm a businessman, not a priest. A, you're not a businessman. You're, you're pressing buttons on the computer. You're, like, your wallet has Floki in it as well. Don't, don't. Do <laughs> Um, but I, I find that telling. Uh, <laughs> oh, Floki doesn't, it doesn't do it for you lads? All right, okay. <laughs> um, I, I do think that there is this kind of Fuck. implicit, <laughs> well, you know, it's it's a market, I'll fill it. I, I don't want to call it arbitrage, that they'd be like, well, if I don't do it, someone else will. Therefore, you know, even though I know it's a terrible idea, I mean, we could see this with, with Luna as well, going back to Do Kwan, that, you know, um, the, the, the great thing about um, algorithmic stablecoins is that a true algorithmic stablecoin has never been tried. I think I've used that line before. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I have no idea if that's a call from you or something else. I apologize. But, but like, no, 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 it's very true because, like, <clears throat> sorry, sorry to interrupt, but, like, no, there is this phenomenon with, algorithmic stablecoins and other unsustainable schemes that whenever they fail there's a bit of the no that one wasn't real though everyone knew that one was broken <laughs> except right, for all the right. people who didn't all of us <laughs> smart people knew it was broken and those people deserved it um 
And it doesn't matter which group of people and how important they were or how central to the industry were invested in the stupid thing because yeah. it wasn't real and everyone knew yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, true seniorage has never been tried is an undercurrent between Basis Cash, Luna, every other. I, I, will, I will take my knocks for not being vocal about this at the time simply because I... Um, and at one point I did buy some wrapped Luna. I, I did. Um, wrapped simply because I was like well okay fine you know I, I might as well whatever, number go up um, you even went the wrapped said, route uh, you like you yeah, <laughs> yeah well I wasn't going to bridge to Luna fuck off um, <laughs> the so, I mean, come, wrapping back to the ultimate point <laughs> I, I don't know if social like if social deterrence is really going to do anything for it. I, I, I think there are subsets that you can uh, you can get. Like I I've, like I can identify a group of Twitter that, you know, can think in a certain way. I can't speak for a shopkeeper mm. in Hyderabad. I cannot speak for um, the single father in uh, in Bangkok. I, I cannot speak for. Um, the waitress in the Midwest, um, in terms of you know, this is what you should do, and not doing this is a bad, like a good thing, and this is how. When I say that, and I put moral weight to it, I'm no better than um, than the clearinghouse that decides what fun should and shouldn't be um, shouldn't be permitted. Yeah, and I think that's that's also um, it's the, that that like sort of sense of just wild permissionlessness. That, that affords all of those people the opportunity to participate in these systems, right? Um, but also gives them, you know, the possibility of being uh, hoodwinked by them or, you know, hoodwinked by the scammers in, the, in, in these systems. That's like the real double-edged sword, ultimately. You know, I, I think that maybe my, my views have changed somewhat because when I first got into this space, I was like, you know, Hell yeah, code is law, down with everything, the Bitcoin standard, yada, 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 right? Like, I was just really starry-eyed and... Uh, All right, Luke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, only three kids for me, not eight, so... No. <laughs> I'm like three-eighths of a Luke, good best. Um, <laughs> by, by pure progeny uh, standards. Anyway, I... I um, um, but no, all that, like, I, I definitely, there is something alluring about that because, you know, I think, especially as someone who, like, got into, you know, started my career in the midst of the great financial uh, collapse, like, mm. graduated from grad school in 2009, like, fuck, you know, yeah. I, I just felt, like, so, um, you know, so betrayed by the system and yada, 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 right? Um but I've seen, like, you know, you sort of see what happens in a world with, like, complete and utter lawlessness, right? Um, and you see what that permissionlessness can bring in a very negative way. And it's, uh, it does, it does give you, like, pause over what sort of, like, you, you, you know, I don't, I don't really want a system with pure anarchy, ultimately, right? But I, I can admit also that this tech, that a lot of the technology, um, the fact that, like, you know, Bitcoin is this permissionless system where you can audit the supply, but you can do that in a more generic way for other financial instruments and other derivatives in a way that you'd never mm. be able to do in the you know old financial system, right? Um, and or you can even have hybrid models where where maybe you do have some degree of trust with some centralized entity, but there's you know a, a degree of like more visibility and auditability, auditability into what they're doing um, that you can't really get anywhere else or in any other system the the sheer irony of course is that like so much of the shitty collapses in our industry are from people that uh maybe claim that on the surface but ultimately operate in a centralized fraudulent manner where none of that could have been ascertained you know yeah. um and and that part really like like saddens me because i do think that there is this uh ultimate like you know a halo effect of negativity a you know, negative halo effect for um those the f stuff that those folks engaged in and how it then takes away from some of the actually interesting and powerful aspects of a lot of this technology i'm like i'm i'm curious where you guys would draw like like okay i like a great instance of something i satir someone i satirize uh relentlessly is justin sun just for all of his shit coins <laughs> and the like absurd 
this is again one of these people who I've spoken about. Uh, like I assume most people, when we were speaking about, if you were speaking about SBF before the collapse of FTX and Alameda Research, everyone was like, "He is so fucking rich. He's so fucking rich. He has so much money. He could he could backstop the whole entire industry for sure." Um, and I think a lot of people are suggesting the same things about Justin Sun. But then I look at like what he's done, and I go, "Okay, like I make fun of Tron." constantly but like as you should it, you, you are morally uh, obliged to make fun of Trump. <laughs> but then my question becomes like so a lot of people i like i assume at least maybe i'm wrong you guys feel free to jump in and tell me i'm wrong but i assume a lot of people legitimately transact with tron and utilize the blockchain this man invented like is this a bad representation of the industry or is it a good representation of the industry? I'm, I'm going to put my cards let, on the let, table. Let's put an asterisk oh. next to invented. <laughs> yeah. Right, he he, he right. took an implementation of Ethereum sure. and sure. changed sure. a couple of constants and then plagiarized a white paper. Including the but again, same. again, that, that like, is that something that's uncommon in cryptocurrency even, right? Like right. we're talking about open source code. We're talking about something that like, everyone's like, go ahead, take it if you want to. So he did. And then he threw his stupid fucking face on it. And now it's, you know, Tron. So I like, I, but is that, that's part of the, like, this is why I'm, this is why I'm asking, like, is this a good or bad representation or is it just that like, this is what's to be expected? I would uh, like to, A, congratulate you for activating my trap card because I have a lot <laughs> to say about Justin Sun, mainly because I fucking hate him. Um, the reason that Justin Sun will never see the pearly gates is uh, because of one original sin, and that is, and, and to be fair, there are many more after that. Um, the prime one is when he created the fork um, that is now ultimately Tron. He changed the decimals and things to six as a default rather than 18, which means that immediately when you <laughs> port things over, it fucks things up unless you think things through. This mm. is a self-report for having written some stuff for Tron. And it says a lot that shortly before I came back to start law school here, I spent about three weeks in New York. I walked through Times Square at about 11 p.m., and uh, Josh can confirm this because I was um, I was in a group chat with um, um, other people telling me that I was you know they're just egging me on making bad decisions, drinking, just buying stuff off the street, walk into Times Square, look up and see Justin Sun with Biddle on Tron, and I threw my beer in the bin and I went home in a huff because fuck that man. <laughs> the great thing about Justin Sun, the world's greatest egomen egomaniac is um, a pathological need to be in the story. We all have read articles about getting the pump on the coin. We have all seen how every time there is a collapse or any kind of difficulty, he will come in and he will volunteer. It is one of my favorite bits to do, that as soon as something happens, to be like, in before Justin Sun comes in and not to buy the stress <laughs> assets. It is, it is one of the reasons I get out in the bed in the morning when something goes wrong. <laughs> is to dunk on Justin Sun. The funny thing, and I, I think the thing that um, was a bit telling back in the day was when Tron was new, they did a $100,000 prize pool effort for um, applications on Tron. This was 2018. So I was fairly new to Solidity Development. We were still on version 4.2 something. Um, and to be blunt, most of the stuff that we had, I don't even think Maker was around yet. Um, I know this because there's a period of time where I spent a lot of time looking at Maker uh, CDPs. It was just Ponzi contracts. And a bunch of us literally just took code, ported it over, converting from 18 to six decimal points, gave it to him untrammeled and went, hello, we'd like some of the prize pot, please. And to the best of my knowledge, um, I think people that I know got something like 80% of that pop and just pumped garbage into Tron and called it a glorious success. That is mm. a story that has been the echo of Tron throughout, right? Mm. Um, Terra failed. USDD. We're going to double the yield. Um, this time will work. This is, again, the true, like, true algorithmic stable coins have never been done properly. <laughs> he will attempt to backstop this again. Instead of buying the billion dollars of Bitcoin that Luna Labs, uh, that Terra Labs did, he had it out of his own pocket. So, you know, he's got it available to him. Um, 
the thing is, because everything was like up until recently, I may be wrong on this because I don't want to spend more time thinking about this man than I have to. Um, <laughs> Uh, minting is now open. Like, well, the reason that this was never at risk was because the minting was was so low that it was like, well, he can obviously bank run it himself. So it's going to be a blazing success. Like, I mean, it's 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 an opportunity <laughs> cost for him. Um, I'm gonna stop, but um, <laughs> I think coming back to the original point here, uh, I think there might have been a point about three four years ago where Justin Sun could have back stopped a large part of DeFi. That is certainly not true anymore. Um, hmm. whether you like it or not a large part of DeFi runs on stable coins such as Tether and Circle he cannot backstop that and sell through his liquid wealth um, he couldn't do it even through his illiquid, illiquid wealth does that make has this fed into the ego perhaps perhaps not um, and the chance that anyone ever sends him a clip fuck you Justin um, sorry <laughs> I, this is really a passionate thing for me um <laughs> Is he indicative oh. of a wider trend in terms of like chances who want to get away with things? I believe so for a certain type of sociopath. Um, and to be fair, like there, despite everything that I've said, I still have a grudging respect for him as the the grifter that chanced it. I couldn't do that because I have morals. Um, <laughs> Does that deserve respect? <laughs> Okay, a begrudging respect. Um, in the same way that someone that um, can climb the Burj Khalifa can do it. I'd be like, I recognise you are utterly insane for this and you will probably be killed ultimately doing the task that you are trying to do. But I wouldn't do it. Good on you. Um, so yeah, looping back. I think this comes down to... Okay, you asked again. Uh, the other question you asked was, do I know anyone else that's actually interacting on Tron? The cynical... And to be blunt, I think white Western answer would be, I don't know. I don't know anyone. I think this comes down mm -hmm. to, again to the Dunbar number. I believe mm -hmm. that there are people and I believe that they're not that they're not doing it ironically. Um, mm -hmm. But I also believe that they will never interact with my side of Twitter. Um, they are the Chinese speaking mm -hmm. lot who will use Weibo. Um, I even whether or not they've bought into the USDD yield stuff, whether or not they actually know anything about just it. They're like, okay, it's it's a cheap blockchain. They can transact with it. They can do dog coin shit. I believe there is some primitive DeFi. I don't think there's like Maker on it, for example. No one that has any respect ports their app over to the Tron chain ID. I, I have nothing good to say about Justin except for his hair. I, I want to know who his hairstylist <laughs> is. Josh, please, I've talked for way too long. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know that I can follow that. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, we probably should get to the question of what is West Ham? West Ham. Thank you. West Ham. <laughs> no okay. further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> Josh, do you, do you want to give you a go at what West Ham is? Uh... It's really more like it's it's more a concept than <laughs> a state of mind more than anything else uh okay no what for real though do, do you really want to know what west ham I, I, i'm happy for you to tell people what west ham sure is. sure so so and i actually i was a latecomer to west ham uh but it is a group chat that lawrence started when another twitter fr twitter friend got drunk and started taking pictures of West Ham Stadium. West Ham is a football club that I am vaguely aware of, but my association is obviously very different at this point. Um, <laughs> and, and, and as a result of that experience, like I think, Lawrence, you, you created this group chat of just, why don't I put random people in, random people that I know from crypto Twitter into this giant pot, whatever the max number, it's like, you know, 74 people. 75. 75, 75, yeah. 75 on Twitter, Twitter group DMs. Which is, by the way, the most abominable group chat interface known to man. It is so broken. Even pre, pre uh, Mr. Tweet was very broken. I'm, I'm glad that whoever designed the Twitter D group chat thing has got fired. That's all. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they should have been shot on the way out as well. Yeah, I sometimes like. I sometimes want to make a reference in that group chat, and I have to scroll up to like 12 hours prior and it literally takes me 10 minutes it's the most painful experience but <laughs> in any event that, that group chat actually became like probably my favorite corner of of crypto twitter because it's just 
it's a bunch of very random of like geographically diverse some anons some you know fully doxed individuals just like shooting shooting the shit about what's happening um you know in in crypto twitter and it resulted in me like like you know we were talking about earlier committing to the bit uh it resulted in me creating an entirely fake website forked from the berkshire hathaway uh, uh website for west ham capital to try and convince people during the ftx collapse that west ham capital was uh was able to backstop losses <laughs> which was quite fun uh, i do want to state that capitalized. I, I, <laughs> the well capitalized. bringing this full circle as well uh back to luke dash and his issues with the code uh, on the West Ham Capital site during the legal disclaimer, you importantly state code isn't law. So you were ahead of your time. Yes, uh, tr true trailblazers in the fields of everything that we've ever set our minds to, <laughs> including uh, finance, uh, the fact that we are banned from the, uh, the London Stadium uh, en masse. Um, the, Is that, the that's not true, the right? Is that true? That's not true. Uh, you 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 have to invite me back to find out. Um, <laughs> the the very funny thing is that I I am not a West Ham fan. I am not a Premier League fan of football. I uh, I grew up in South Africa. My my sports are rugby and cricket. Um, sports that are very boring to watch for people that do not know what they are, especially cricket. Um, I now, um, several months on from the creation of West Ham, have a West Ham plaque. I have a West Ham poster. <laughs> I have a West Ham shirt. Um, I'm going to give my next academic talk in a West Ham jersey. Um, and it, it does feel like... And, and my wife, my, my adoring medic wife, who has <laughs> nothing to do with any of this shit, is questioning things <laughs> which to be fair i mean I, I, what, like, she, like why she's, she's yeah. married to you or I mean, like, no, 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 you're suddenly I mean, interested in west ham's i mean that's in the top five bennett but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the original thing was what happened it was it was basically a sociological experiment what happens if i throw 75 people that i don't really know but kind of like i've seen around into a group and see how well they gel then I started getting a little bit brutal with the or like with the kicking and adding other people in. But I thought like had a certain skill set. There were programmers, there were lawyers, um, there were marketers, um, or just they had some salient insights. And uh, yeah, I know it's resulted in a couple of jobs, um, a cool. couple of uh, relationships. It's it's very and it is mostly now just a as soon as oh it's also a, a ruthless place uh, in terms of copyright for material. Um, it is pure anything, IP anarchy in there. It is. If you if you've made the mistake of posting in the chat first and you don't post it um, on the timeline, that's entirely <laughs> on you. Um, it's 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 entertain like it is something that I think this is the case regardless of your community, right? Like I, I think people on crypto Twitter occasion and and Twitter writ large they say what I'm missing is a community, and this is again for for the critical amongst you. I apologize um, when people <laughs> join crypto i think a thing that they want to learn mostly is who do i speak to this is the I, this isn't even crypto this is anything online yeah. right you know I, I i'm playing monster hunter i'm playing i'm playing um, genshin impact who are my tribe and to be fair given the predatory nature of a lot of crypto a lot of that come boils down to who are the people that i can dump on turn your friends into exit liquidity as bennett adequately knows <laughs> through cash um the <laughs> The creation of like a group chat that will do that like has truly like become a bit of a second family, um, one that I actually like spending time with. Um, <laughs> I realise that the odds are very low that my actual family are ever going to run towards this, which means I'm completely in the clear. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. My parents are going to be more questions. Going to be more questions. <laughs> Bring them. It's fine. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I think um, oh. an, an attempt at creating a community for people that didn't have one turned into something lovely. And I don't think that actually has anything to do with crypto. I think that speaks mm. more to a common interest can actually result in something really nice. Um, it also happens to be a ruthless place for misinformation. 
um, <laughs> where stuff is, is boiled up. And uh, I realise I am... Effect- anyone... West Ham will be watching this. I realise I have effectively blown the lid off of things. I've alluded to it before. And cope. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and the, the misinformation, which... <laughs> <laughs> it, it's satire in a sense because the like rap, West Ham rap, is he, doing he, it, with, and it's like <laughs> that's why I brought it up is because I've seen the various jokes across Twitter that kind of center around that. I do think you're absolutely right though that like a lot of people are looking to try to find a community, and like I remember when I first came on crypto Twitter, I like followed the common people who would be referenced in like follow Fridays or on like online lists of these are the crypto people you need to follow. And it took me like a year and a half to reset my following list to something with intelligent people in it. <laughs> yep. Yep. And if you're following Josh now, you've still fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know what dark corner led you to us, but we're sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. I was, I was, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I, I do find that like, I mean, I, 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 I treat a lot of like um, my side of Twitter as just kind of there's a bit like it's, it's a bit of a pit at this point, um, mm. and I, I do like to imagine like what I tell myself when I'm struggling to sleep at night because of guilt of the stupid shit I see, is that it it is a bit of a um, a sampling of across the board. I follow some of the most intelligent people I know that are genuinely doing things that are truly interested, and I follow some uh, coin have dog kind of people as well um and, and that, that, that it's helpful to kind of check what the overton window looks like of of crypto writ large hmm. um i mean even on the critical side right i um said i i am i would consider myself friends with the two of you of you um there are certain people that i, I will not interface with <laughs> but um i i, I think it's it's folly, especially on the internet, given that I am, um, to effectively borrow a term from GCR, long on human misery. Um, God to, damn. Dude, what the Like, fuck? the increasing thing, like, um, humans becoming increasingly digitally online, like, perpetually. To be like, okay, like, this is online, I might as well curate things and monitor things, and, like, this mm. is where things are going to happen in the future. Mm. So I might as well keep mm. an eye on how things look there. Mm. Um, be it for like people that I would get along with or people that I'm probably going to bump into in parliament in five years shouting at a select committee for evidence <laughs> I can't wait yeah. for the day that this clip appears in front of MPs saying why I should be disqualified <laughs> from giving evidence on legislation uh, so um, whoever's prime minister then, seven from now um, nice to meet you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and for me I just sort of maybe rename internally anyway West Ham as Exhibit A <laughs> there are so many uh, lawyers just, in West Ham. So, so many I'm lawyers. Sure in West Ham. That be allowed to stand. <laughs> yeah, just call hopefully. it wire. Fr- just call it wire fraud, guys. Just call it wire fraud. We did fix uh, it. There, there was a brief bit where we did call it wire fraud. Yeah. We uh, did. Don't worry, we got there too. I, I I'm in one group chat where as soon as I saw that news drop, the first thing I did was rename it to say <laughs> wire fraud. And I'm like, well. <laughs> I have a screenshot where about 11 chats are all just <laughs> one go. It was like a five minute window. Um, uh. I realized there was one other thing. I think what we did was we spoke a bit about kind of like the, um, the reputational um, pull of certain people such as Justin's son. And Kaz, one thing that you, you did want to talk to and we can either um, leave, this, leave this be or get to is kind of our takes on... Um, certain centralized, um, like the focal points of certain centralized services and kind of how they get an easy time in things. I, I, I am thinking like, I think given back previous conversations, people like Zuzu and Carl Davies and their uh, attempted um, Phoenix uh, play for uh, for GTX. Um, I mean, Josh, what, I, I, what, I'm going to go on. Was that Phoenix an intentional reference? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> To, to Gax Rising? Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I I just had a second there where I was like... <laughs> Wait, he knows things and he drinks. That's what he... <laughs> um, uh, so I don't know if we want to go anywhere with this, but I, I think like this last year, I mean, when, when was the... The funny thing is that in the last, I think, day or two, there was news that turns out like the, S- the STF DPEG is really what kind of caused... It was Cassus Belli for myriad collapses 
including what ultimately took out Three Arrows Capital, it took out Luna um, down the road, as you've seen, it's taken out Genesis, etc. And it turns out that, that was ultimately those wallets were um, 3AC. So what they did was, you know, like kind of a Rube Goldberg suicide. Hmm. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> the... And it, I, I think it enrages me kind of after like the, the fall of uh, Sam Bankman Freed. Um, a man who I have spoken to my uh, constitutional law seminar leaders about because they have asked me questions too because they've twigged what I do. Um, that mm. these two have had the gall to uh, to attempt to come back. And like, I mean, this is kind of an open question where like, I, I think... But I guess I I think in terms of like the the chasing down like the dastardly deeds and like in terms of like what people are currently doing, you guys will probably be better like suited to me. But I think Josh and I will have more thoughts on where we think they fit in the ecosystem um, and like whether they should be beaten to death. Answer the yes, they should. Um, Josh, do you want to lead on with anything from that? Oh, yeah, I mean, just, just depending on which country they find themselves in, they might well be beaten to death as a, as a punishment for whatever. Per <laughs> my last inshallah, in all of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I uh, uh, yeah, I I find it's I mean it's it's sort of interesting, right? Because on some level, like the, you, I think on a personal level, you, it's important for people to have, you know, a degree of grace and forgiveness for people that have wronged them in life, you know. Um, like, I think it's an important part of, uh, of growing as an individual and being able to strive to, you know, um, to, to understand that people are human, right? What they are doing uh, is on a much larger scale and is unforgivable in my, in my view. Oh, human, liquidate nine figures is divine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and And the fact that they're also trying to, like, rebrand themselves as somehow like lifestyle gurus like going full on like Naval Robin Robin Kent without like any of the wealth uh, (laughs) which is really just that is so uh, I mean that's insulting in so many ways (laughs) I uh, the fact um, that you the fact that you've likened these two to the most midwit character on (laughs) <laughs> I, I have no I, time for I don't give a shit if he sees this either. <laughs> He's definitely not watching Crypto Critics Corner. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I, I agree with you. I think it would be. I mean, I do want to say that they. I think they were always doing that lifestyle shit. I mean, wasn't Suzu known for like his stupid fucking quotes that he would constantly do all the time and. Being Suzu's Mr. Fucking was, Suzu's thing was kind of pretentious accelerationism dressed up as the super cycle. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to call that lifestyle so much as effectively and re- retroactively a genuine heart placed belief in a up only forever um, a kind of market bubble. Yeah, um, one of the things you. S- you said there was you think they have it easier in a sense can you speak to what you think is easier for them i have at this point now dealt with a couple of cases where people have um th- this comes back to like my belief in like coders law and that coders law is not a thing but people that have like attacked protocols and like f- and fled the scene effectively like um will widely split um, things between oh they did nothing wrong they were incredibly based and um, people who are sane mm. or people who have worked in production systems for any kind of software engineering project um, not I can't believe I'm saying that uh, software engineers are on the side of God but uh, apparently that's where, that's where I've landed um, <laughs> what are you gonna do arrest me <laughs> <laughs> the I I think. This comes down to like that old adage, right? You owe the bank five hundred million; it's your problem. You owe the bank five hundred million; it's the bank's problem. And I, I think a large chunk of this is down to the fact that so much money was lost and so much damage was done that it almost behooves us all to give them a redemption arc to show them that this is not how it was. Um, like, I mean, it was truly a slip. Um, 
Uh, Kaz is shaking his head, and I genuinely want to hear what's coming out of this. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking about like oh, it, it's almost this idea of like well, we just need to prove that there is value here though. Like it's it's it feels almost yeah. desperate to be like yeah, yeah like, yeah, yeah. like no, it, we'll it, give it these that. horrible horrible guys the, the, yeah. they can be here they can be you're, you're in the club it's okay just because you're so much like it's not their fault public it's not their fault and it's like. Fucking Andrew Tate had a crypto Twitter alt. <laughs> I, I, I would be, I would judge no one for a pogrom that killed anyone that knew what an EVM stood for. Um, <laughs> it's. I think when it comes down to, um, I think we, you know we talked about this idea of like, um, kind of dissuading people and I, I linked I, I referenced this poll that I did where a bunch of people were very happy to get involved in GTX I think a lot of that is pure greed um, I, I, I do think you know the meme of oh I'm, I'm in it for the tech um, like it's a meme for a reason there are people that are just like no I am literally just here for the money and I can't blame them um, when it comes to and I said I my, my ire is not reserved for those two bell ends right I mean it, it, it extends in a <laughs> wide blast radius to Machinsky, uh, to Bankman Freed, to Ellison, um, to to many others who, to be blunt, after three drinks, I cannot remember. Um, and I do think that there is a large amount of cope in the well. If this time it goes right, then that's like a a validation of the tech stack. I wrote a thread fairly after, like fairly shortly after the FTX collapse, where I said, um, "This is not a crypto problem." Um, it's it's the it's a collapse of an opaque shadow bank, and this got a lot of heat. Mm. Um, my 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 take was, um, despite the fact that crypto has its myriad problems in terms of confusion, in terms of regulation in the United States and worldwide, and the fact that effectively they could do what they wanted in an untrammeled setting, this would have happened were they allowed to trade soda or or paint colors. Um, it's it's down to the people mm. that are responsible. I realize that this is a take that a lot of people disagree with, but it's one that I at the time believed when I posted it. Um, when it comes down to then like, oh, I, I want my redemption arc, um, to be like, okay, what to do the same thing again? Like it's, it's fairly telling that like in three hours of capital's case, it was, I ran a hedge fund. Now I want to do a debt exchanging thing. Those two are entrepreneurial geniuses. They checked for product market fit for selling debt on claims before they decided to launch a fucking exchange doing exactly the same thing with an order of magnitude difference. Absolutely no notes. <laughs> Moral notes, maybe. <laughs> Societal notes. <laughs> Fair. Um, I, I do think... I do think... I, I, I think, like, a, a proper skeptic, like, a, there is no redemption for this entire industry, will listen to me talk and go, a lot of this sounds like cope. I like to imagine that there are more people like me that go, okay, look, um, these people should be tarred and feathered, um, exiled from things. They can come back if they want, but they will never have the power that they did. Um, a couple of sensible discussions with regular... I, I, I do find there's a, a narrative of never interact with um, authorities for you know because oh we want to do whatever we want I, I think that's folly i think that's a way to find that you end up with stuff like um tornado cash happening over and over again um i may turn around in 10 years and go yeah turns out qualifying as a lawyer and speaking to the government was a huge fucking mistake but i've got to try um the degree to which i can even help there is perhaps up in the air right when you have cases like the people from three hours capital when you have um like the FTX lot, not all of whom are in prison. Um, but these aren't even new uh, cases. Self. This is th this is like a in, a thing that has happened. Like I think my shining example would be Sifu, and or if you want to call him Michael Pattern by his real name. Um, yeah. I mean this this guy. How did he have any redemption arc? Like he was involved I, in I, Quadriga I, CX. It sure as fuck seems like he stole people's money, um, and now he. Like, he stole people's money again, I guess. And that was cool? Like, everybody's just cool with that? I, um... 
I won't comment on any of the Wonderland slash time stuff, mainly because it's not in my mind right now. I remember, like, one of... It's, 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 it's weird what forms in your mind as a memory. I remember, like, in my kind of dog days of living in Singapore, I, I sunburn very easily, so whenever I go to the pool, there's a memorable event. Um, and I remember in my, like, reading my phone about Jared Cotton and the Quadrigo CX collapse, and I remember seeing his name, um, Michael Patron. And I was like, okay, that, that's interesting. And I turned to my wife, who was uh, also burning in the sun, and I said, he's not fucking dead. Not a chance. My wife went, that's nice, honey. I don't give a shit. And that was the end of that. And then when it turned out the great reveal, and I believe it was from Zach XBT that revealed who he was, um, you know, kind of the, oh, wow, okay, that's, that's, that's a throwback from several years back. And I think the take from... All four of us have a fairly limited... Um, kind of perspective on what's ex like what's accepted and what's like like vilified here because like we we're, we're creatures of Twitter, um, and it seemed like a fair chunk of people went yeah that's base that means he knows how to run a, like a large number like a large amount of money I'm like okay well not well and again to my <laughs> own sin and um, one that I've been slowly starting to fix. I didn't say anything, A, because I knew nothing about Wonderland time at the time, except it was an Olympus fork, and B, because I just didn't want the grief. I, I, I've never been someone that's worried about annoying people and going, oh, well, you shouldn't say X about Y. But I was like, well, I, I don't want to say something that's wrong. Um, he has gone fairly quiet. He launched Sifu Vision. Um, I, I have no idea what the status of that is. Um, I do have a slightly weird take that, I mean... <sighs> He didn't serve any time, did he? Or, or did he? He did for the identity theft cases back when he was Omar <laughs> Dahani, before yes. he was Michael Patrin. Yes. And there's part of me that thinks, and this is the lawyer <laughs> in me, he served his time for the crime of which he was convicted, therefore, there but for the grace of God, we, um, you know, like, we, we've served our time. Does that yeah. mean that tinker around with finance? Absolutely not. So I was fairly conflicted myself. I was like, I, I don't want to, to intervene with, with this. And th that's on me. Not that at the time I had any reach or really, like, no one would have cared. I, I wasn't a Wonderland person. So like, it's like, oh, it's someone else coping and seething on Twitter. I guess I'm not suggesting that people need to be condemned. Um, or like shunned out of the entire like society or something. Um, but I think the fact that these people can come back and there are supporters, right? There, as soon as Zach revealed that uh, Sifu was Michael Patron, like there, there was like a significant portion of the of the industry was like, hey, that's awesome. And I just like, it's hard for me to fathom why. Like, why is that awesome? What is cool about that? Why would you want so, this guy involved? Yeah. And that that's, no, that's a, and I, I don't, I mean, I, again, I can't speak to the, as Lawrence was alluding to, like we all have our very kind of narrow perspectives based off of our own corners of Twitter and, um, you know, whatever other community experiences we have in cryptocurrency at large. Um, but there is this like, there is this this sentiment around people almost evaluating it like a Keynesian uh, beauty contest, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, well, this guy's back. I know that there will be a bunch of dumb people that buy into his antics. Therefore, I will buy into his antics because of all the other, mm -hmm. you know, second, third, fourth order thinking and like other people thinking like me. So, of course, this is going to pump right. and all of that, right? And so I, I think that there is this like strange echo effect Financial where people incentive. that should be vilified for all of this and maybe would be in other systems are instead granted uh if not forgiveness certainly like some degree of enablement from this broader community that just or not community but certainly like a broad collection of people that have various incentives to say yeah let let them cook <laughs> right yeah. like you know sure I, I know I know that kitchen's gonna blow up, <laughs> but until it does, be some great food coming out of there. And I want to yeah. I want to bite, right? Oh, um, oh, oh, food is what's being cooked in Joquan's <laughs> kitchen in this analogy. <laughs> <laughs> food yeah. is what they're not, looking not for. Books. Not books. Not books. <laughs> I think this comes down to like, so one of my beliefs about this whole weird mess 
that this podcast mm. is about Ow. that Josh and I work in is, and I, I'm going to effectively quote from a um, from an article I wrote last year, which is the crypto is one of the examples that's like best going of a tabula rasa, and it's like by that I mean that like anyone who comes to it with like intent to engage treats it as a blank slate, so like their own philosophy, politics, and worldview gets projected. And I, I think there's like a lot to be said there for like this notion of like I don't even want to call it live and let live, right? Hmm. Um, a lot of it is like oh well you know I I would certainly hate it if I goofed and then I was condemned. Um, it, it's how I imagine the thinking goes. Or, you know, mm. people who perhaps more charitably would be like, well, I deserve a second chance and I shouldn't be cast out into the wolves for, for the things I did. Um, I don't think that's a moral judgment for me to make. I mean, well, I, I make it um, quite, quite vehemently on, on Twitter often. But again, I think this comes down to um, this idea of like, you know, how do you socially kind of push people away from something where they're like, I'm going to make 10x on this. Um <sighs> I have no answer. I mean, time and time again, they don't, right? Like someone they try does. to tend. Someone, someone does. Someone does. It's not you. A16Z yeah. does. Yeah, A16Z yeah. does. Like, I, it's, yeah. it's, I. Crypto I, I was guess a five year I, experiment by Harvard, uh, Harvard University to transfer the world <laughs> to A16Z. This experiment is concluded. Thank you for your time. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think. I, I guess I guess the only the only thing I'm trying to say, like, I don't even think so when we're talking about second chances, I'm like, I'm all I'm all for it. That's cool. I'm totally cool with, for instance, if someone did their time like you were, we were talking about with Sifu. So you do your time for your crime, like the idea that you can't ever be involved in crypto at all. Well, that's silly. Like, of course you can. Of course you can jump into this industry and buy coins and support people if you want to. But like. The idea that he would be welcomed back as a founder, I guess, is yep. the issue and like and supported in that role. I, I have trouble. It's it's not that I guess I have a trouble in the judgment of that is what I'm trying to express. Because this time will be different. Right. <laughs> uh, it always was a fun is. fun day when they were like one signature on the multi-sig away from sending Sifu like 40 million dollars. <laughs> Hey, hey! Uh, I remember. I remember. True, true, true redemption arcs have not been tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, and like, like, like a true redemption arc for most of these people would probably look like finding quiet ways to contribute or educate people on the things they did wrong and how to I avoid them. I think you're fine. Let's I'm make not, it all back. I I'm gonna spin fine. the roulette wheel one more time, and this that, time it's coming up red. I'm sure. The last person right. who tried that arc. Um, was Kyle Davies when he posted a picture, a painting of himself with gracious and humbled, I will be sharing my knowledge to the degree that it does good, and then immediately starts his next grift. Right. So, to be fair, <laughs> I think the correct answer to then the, the acceptance is that's nice, please face the wall now. <laughs> True. I mean, but it wasn't us like making fun of his painting ability that made him do that right like it's not on us right <laughs> i mean I, I go to sleep comfortable that it wasn't but i wouldn't i wouldn't be, feel guilty if it was listen <laughs> entering it troubling in ground of... <laughs> listen it exists in a pattern of behavior right <laughs> it's not like gtx is a one-off oh yeah. boy it's not yeah, like guys. he was such a great member of an upstanding member of the community and then you made fun of him <laughs> yeah he had his joker moment and decided that was it yeah okay fair, fair. he got rejected <laughs> from art school um, <laughs> this was this rejected from art school moment hey bring it full circle you wanted to talk about which races we hate right lawrence uh <laughs> no 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 i uh, I, I said that I wasn't sure whether anyone would be willing to accept my we should cage the English like dogs of you. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think the English have a lot of defenders. I think you'll be okay. Right, especially people that watch this. I don't think I have much moral weight on this given that I have a Cambridge accent. Fuck. 
They, the machete is you know, I think that there are so. like our number three, number two or number three country that of listeners. So this will be great for us too. Uh, so yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Everybody really get, <laughs> getting our German listeners happy, getting our, our English listeners happy. Everyone is going to be blessed today. Um, okay. Uh, Plus it's definitely getting demonetized. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yep. What money? Oh um, it's all gone. <laughs> It's a really good thing that you've created fuck coin because that is an absolute <laughs> spinner. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> oh my God. Think about it. If it uh, all goes wrong, you can take pictures of uh, famous moments on the Crypto Critics Corner podcast and uh, make <laughs> when it work. We're going to NFT gonna... it all, baby. Um they're got you on ordinals just because I want to see Adam back and Luke Dash's reaction to the you and I minting ordinals is, on Bitcoin. We're always, going to break Bitcoin. It is always morally correct to lie and cheat the code on Bitcoin mainnet. <laughs> that's that's akin to breaking the law. Uh, I, said, I mean, I, I have takes on. Um, uh, said my, my code is all take on like the Ethereum virtual mainnet is effectively that intent matters. And um, that, I, was, I mean, like, I, I have demonstrable history on this sense. I do feel like that... parody. I, yeah, I, <laughs> correct. <laughs> uh, in, in my previous arc as DevOps 199. But I, I do feel that, like, when your take there is then X was not designed for Y. Again, you would never validate a transaction that contained X data for a monkey JPEG. Um, <laughs> that's completely a moral judgment. And it's one that... That I could probably do an entire show as a solo, if not the host, on my takes on Bitcoin maximalism. Uh, but I won't, because again, I don't want you to be demonetized. Um, <laughs> but suffice it to say that... I, yes, I you do. Have, I know you do. <laughs> fair enough. And because, uh, well, I know that, that means that I have someone to advertise with whenever I want. <laughs> I do find that I think like there is... I, I posted this in a tweet earlier where I, I think, and oh god, this is going to be the bit that gets clipped out. Um, <laughs> this is the I bit. This is the bit. Yeah, We're this is the, the bit. bit. Right. Right. Yeah, not not, not caging clipped up out. the English. This is the one that's going to be cut. Well, I mean, this is the bit for your, your red meat for your crypto critics, where I was saying on Twitter that I don't think it's either moral or practical for people to shill or advocate for Bitcoin in particular as a solution for store of value or transactions in the medium to long term future, given current concerns over network security or the people that are currently working as core devs and its acolytes. I will write this up at some point. Um, Nobody is, is going to clip that, Lawrence. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, no, listen, listen. <laughs> I, I think I'm top 10 in like Bitcoin people who care about the long term security budget. So I think you're safe. <laughs> All right. Okay. Fair enough. Clip it for yourself. I don't give a shit. There you go. <laughs> oh, Cast, do you uh, have anything else? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck, man? No, I, it's, we're, uh, we're toast with this video. Go, so I have no idea. Like, go upstairs and have a cold bath and think about what he's just allowed to have. <laughs> <laughs> He, he ran Don't away want to hear with about the Bitcoin reserves, so he deserves it. Oh, I ran away. You're the one who fucking gave us up, Fed. I don't know what to say about you trying to blame it on me. Get the fuck out of <laughs> I'm here. I'm really looking forward to your Spider-Man pointing at each other meme when the two of you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just so Cascoin, I'm, just so Cascoin holders don't blame either of us. Um, I, uh, yeah, Cascoin I'm running for like Senate Cascoin now because I heard you got subpoenaed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm. Uh, well, yeah, God, I'm already so many, working so with, with the DOJ. Deep crypto Twitter cuts in this episode that most people are not going <laughs> so to get. So <laughs> stupid. No, not at all. Um, not at all. Thank you. Uh, all Thank right. you so much for your time, both of you. It has been a genuine pleasure yeah. to spend the hours of 10 to 11 getting steadily more drunk in my shed while my lovely <laughs> wife sleeps upstairs snoring with my dog. <laughs> so thank you for this. It, is, it has been a joy and a privilege. It's... <laughs> It's been great to chat with both of you. Josh yeah, is just I grateful he's not near a coughing child right now. He doesn't care. He's just happy to be yeah, here. Yeah, my, my, while well, my heavily pregnant wife deals with two sick children, this has been a lovely, a lovely side <laughs> for which I'm going to pay for later. Oh, uh, I feel like but... we are going, we're all going to hell for this podcast, basically. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Luke That's the real so. moral judgment at the end of the day. 
Okay, uh, I'm gonna stop. Recording. Beautiful. Yeah, we're good. We're done. That was awesome, guys.